Brian Singer's neo-noir classic The Usual Suspects follows the interrogation of seemingly helpless Roger Verbal Kent, one of only two survivors of a devastating fire on a ship docked at the port of Los Angeles. Kevin Spacey's character spins the detectives and viewers a long and twisted tale of drugs, deceit, and death, explaining that everything comes back to a mysterious mob boss by the name of Kaiser Sose. The twist? Kent was Kaiser Sose all along, which the officers realize only a few moments too late. As Kent exits the police station and shuffles off down the street, his awkward gait starts to straighten out, and we realize we've been had. Quentin Tarantino's gleefully inaccurate take on the World War II thriller was nominated for eight Academy Awards, with Christoph Waltz taking home the Oscar for his portrayal of the film's unforgettable villain, Hans Landa. In Glorious Bastards follows Lieutenant Aldo the Apache Rain and his bastards as they go on the hunt for Nazi scalps, finally machine-gunning Hitler himself, although Landa is the one German who Rain cannot kill. Ooh, that's a bingo! <laughs> Is that the way you say it? That's a bingo. You just say bingo. After striking a deal with the top brass, the notorious villain is afforded his freedom in the States, though Aldo doesn't let him slide that easily. With the film all but wrapped up, Lieutenant Rain pulls out his knife and proceeds to carve a swastika into Londa's forehead in a shockingly gory close-up. Loosely based on French author Pierre Boulle's 1963 novel La Planète des Singes, 1968's Planet of the Apes was included in Empire's Greatest Movies of All Time list and contains one of the most iconic examples of a twist ending. Astronaut George Taylor, played by Charlton Heston, leads a group of astronauts stranded on a strange and seemingly deserted planet after their spaceship crash lands there. But the crew soon come to realize that they are not alone. Apes with human-like intelligence dominate this world, and they don't take kindly to the arrival of their otherworldly guests, though it ultimately turns out Taylor and his team are far from alien. As he escapes the apes and makes his way along the shoreline, he comes across the sandy remains of the Statue of Liberty and discovers he's been on Earth the whole time, trapped in a future devastated by nuclear war. Orphan follows a couple trying to move on with their lives after the death of their unborn child. In an attempt to save their marriage, the pair decide to go ahead with their plans for a third child, adopting a quiet nine-year-old Russian girl named Esther. At least they're led to believe she's nine. In truth, Esther is a 33-year-old woman named Lena Klammer, a psychopath with a growth disorder who spent the majority of her life posing as a pigtailed child and being repeatedly adopted. Why does she need to keep finding new families? Because she keeps trying to get it on with the dads. Audiences watch in sheer horror as Esther sets about seducing her new father and finally kills him when he refuses her. The first Star Wars sequel picked up three years after the destruction of the Death Star. Luke Skywalker and the Rebel Assault Squadron bearing down on the super weapon's weak spot remains a memorable enough finale for that first film, but it pales in comparison to the closing stages of The Empire Strikes Back. Han Solo being frozen alive in carbonite and carted off was a shock for fans of the dashing pilot, though the real jaw-dropper comes when Luke arrives at Cloud City, spurned on by a premonition of Han and Leia in pain. The young Jedi falls right into Vader's trap, losing his hand during the lightsaber battle that ensues. In a moment that would be quoted, referenced, and parodied countless times over the years that followed, Vader makes cinema's most notorious parental declaration. No, I am the father. David Fincher's gory thriller 7 is crammed full of shocking moments, but one scene in particular sticks long in the memory, the film's haunting finale. After veteran detective William Somerset and his new partner David Mills finally manage to corner the killer, they discover a box containing the head of Mills' pregnant wife Tracy. Despite it being exactly what the killer wants, the heartbroken detective guns down the skin-headed madman in a heartbreaking climax that unlike many of the movie's other scenes, doesn't need to rely on gore to be shocking. A loose remake of 2002 Hong Kong crime thriller Infernal Affairs, Martin Scorsese's Best Picture winner The Departed moves the action out of Asia and brings it to Boston, home of notorious Irish mob boss Whitey Bulger, the inspiration behind Jack Nicholson's character Frank Costello. The veteran gangster relies on his police mole Colin Sullivan to stay ahead of the game, though he doesn't realize he also has a double agent in his ranks, Billy Costigan. But after finally exposing Sullivan, Costigan is unceremoniously shot in the head by another of Costello's moles. Even more unexpected to audiences, however, was the double blow which followed. 
Staff Sergeant Dignam showing up right at the final moment to put a bullet in Sullivan's temple. Another Scorsese-DiCaprio collaboration with an unexpected ending, psychological thriller Shutter Island follows U.S. Marshal Teddy Daniels and his new partner Chuck. They visit Ashcliff Hospital for the Criminally Insane to investigate the disappearance of a woman incarcerated there for drowning her children. Scorsese delivers a gripping mystery that leads viewers down a winding path with a stunning end. Just as Teddy believes he's about to solve the puzzle of the missing woman, he discovers that his real name is Andrew Latis, and he's actually a patient at the hospital, sent there for killing his wife, who had previously killed their children. The whole investigation was actually a ruse by the head of the facility, designed as a last-ditch effort to snap Latis out of his conspiracy-obsessed insanity. Based on the life and travels of American hiker Christopher McCandless, Sean Penn's Into the Wild is a biographical survival film that spends 148 minutes building up to a happy ending that never comes. The audience gets to know McCandless as he lives in complete isolation in the Alaskan wilderness, intercut with scenes depicting the long road he took to get there. As the film draws to an end, McCandless begins to realize that true happiness can only be shared with others and plans to return home to his family. But the river he crossed four months earlier has become impassable. On the point of starvation, the young backpacker is forced to gather roots and plants to eat, accidentally consuming a poisonous one in the process. The film ends with McCandless crawling into his sleeping bag to die. Writer-director Stephen Chbosky wasn't just aiming to make another teen-centric indie flick when he decided to adapt his own novel, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, for the big screen. He also wanted to make his story, which tackled mental health issues among young people, a more communal experience, in the hope of reaching more of those affected by its themes. The film itself is very well acted by its leads, though it's hard to put your finger on what was so good about their performances when all you can think about is the ending. By the end of the movie, troubled protagonist Charlie has been through the ringer and is about to finally get the girl. But when she touches his leg, he has a flashback of his late Aunt Helen. The film comes to a grim close with Charlie admitting to a psychiatrist that he's been repressing memories of the sexual abuse he suffered from his aunt. Frank Darabont's adaptation of the Stephen King novella The Mist caused controversy before it was even released, after the director chose to go with a different ending from the book. King fans were put at ease when the author gave his approval of the changes, though only a man who has spent a lifetime delving into the bleak could ever claim to have enjoyed it. The film follows a group of people trapped in a supermarket by a deadly mist full of tentacled creatures. In the end, protagonist David and his young son manage to escape in a car, though when they run out of gas, David is forced to use his remaining four bullets on his child and passengers. After shooting them all, he steps out of the car to accept his gruesome fate at the hands of the monsters, only for the mist to clear and the U.S. Army to appear. If there's one director known for his mastery of the twist ending, it's M. Night Shyamalan, a man who enjoys nothing more than lulling his audience into a false sense of security, only to flip the world he's created on its head. He did it to great effect in 2000's Unbreakable and 2004's The Village, but his most famous shock ending came in his first major success, The Sixth Sense. I see dead people. The story follows a kid named Cole as he tries to talk through his ability to see ghosts with a troubled child psychologist. Unless you've been living under a rock, of course, you'll know that Willis's character was actually dead the whole time. And when the film first came out, news of its shocking finale spread like wildfire. Arguably, it was the power of that twist which helped this small-scale supernatural horror bag six Oscar nominations and a staggering worldwide box office total of $673 million. One of the first filmmakers to truly understand the art of the twist, Alfred Hitchcock's particular brand of suspense earned him a well-deserved reputation as the master of suspense, something he delivered consistently over a distinguished five-decade career. Perhaps his most famous shock ending is the one he conceived for Psycho, the story of Norman Bates and his family's motel. While Janet Leigh being slashed in the shower is undoubtedly the movie's best-known scene, the most shocking moment of all comes in the closing stage. We finally realize Norman's mother has been dead all along, and he's been committing murders dressed in her clothing. Hitchcock went to great lengths to keep the twist a secret, swearing the cast and crew to an oath of secrecy and imploring the public to keep quiet about Bates via the film's advertisements. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon!
Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.